Hello and welcome to Woods Motors. I'm Wood and I'm excited to share with you our passion for all things engine and motor related. Today, we're gonna take you through some basic tips on how to maximize your four wheel drive vehicles. And I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be itching to get on the road or more likely get off the road and enjoy the machine that you already own, but maybe are not sure as how to get the most impact out of it and the most fun. So first things first, where do we start? When do you turn on four wheel drive? Basically the quick answer is this, as soon as you're off the concrete road. The second you're on any surfaces that are loose, rubble or wet, turn on your four wheel drive. The reason for this is this, you have so much more traction control and when you do have to hit a corner or turn quickly, which can happen, when you don't have your four wheel drive on, you will skid and you'll lose the back end a lot faster. With four wheel drive turned on, you have so much more control over your vehicle, therefore you're that much safer. As you engage your four wheel drive, you also increase your skid control, as you've seen in the video examples. And it's got an improved significance on your ability to control your vehicle on those slippery wet surfaces or on those sudden turns. And the damage is much more negligible compared to the amount of control that you have when you engage your four wheel drive. And when you're driving, it's important to use the highest parts of your car to drive over the highest objects. And I know that that sounds simple, but as you go over um, rough terrain, just imagine the bottom of your car. Make sure that on the highest parts of that terrain, the highest parts of your car are over that. Here's a quick tip about gear selection. I know that when you're going through those rough roads, and I've done it, if you wanna go from gear two to gear one, you often think, well, let me take my foot off the accelerator. But actually, if you keep your foot on the gas, just at the same level, nice and controlled, and then engage it back down to gear one, the shift will be that much smoother as you go over that terrain, as opposed to clunking your car and slipping the clutch. I hope that helps you. Okay, let's move on to the important subject of tire pressure. As you could imagine, that is important because that's the first port of contact between you, your vehicle, and the road. So having a, a lot of pressure or less pressure is important for you to understand how to protect your tire as well as to get the maximum grip out of those tires. A tire that is hard will penetrate through wet surfaces, whereas a tire that's got soft pressure will tend to float over a wet surface. So I would suggest to lower the pressure for surfaces that are wet to save the energy and the car. However, deflated tires are vulnerable to flattening and can cause damage to the side wall. So you've got to consider these as you drive and ensure that you drive sensibly and make sure you, you put the tire right over the middle of that obstacle so you don't potentially puncture the side wall of your tire. A wide tire has a higher rolling resistance, which is why you should deflate them for the right surfaces. So ensure before you get to your adventure, read the terrain. Understand what you're about to enter into and deflate your tires accordingly to make sure that not only do you get better tread, but also that you're protecting your tire. And that's also down to making sure where you drive. Choose your line and make sure instead of hitting the sides of your tires, you hit those obstacles right in the middle of your tire. Okay, now let's move on to the approach angle. When you're approaching a steep slope, here are some key points to consider as you're driving your vehicle. You gotta understand the approach angle. You see, the body of the vehicle is exposed during the steep slope. So you've got to understand the lowest part of your vehicle as you approach a steep slope. And its departure is also critical as you leave that slope. Climbing a hill is a balancing act of traction and momentum. So therefore, you don't want to use too high or too low of a gear ratio. It's all about balance. You see, too much speed will lose you traction. So you've got a feather and make sure that you ride it just right. With turbo uh, charged vehicles, use a lower gear ratio to maintain the rev level. So what you wanna do is keep your power application smooth and then time your power accordingly without rushing it. Smoothness is the key here. If you slip, if you press or release too quickly, what you wanna do is just feather it as you ride. 
So finding a steeper but flatter um, terrain is a much better choice when you're reading where you're heading. At all times, try to avoid side slopes. It's best to flatten your angle of approach to equal the pressure on both your wheels as you approach that angle. Try to drive at the slowest speed manageable. And the minimum amount of brake usage is the goal while going down a slippery slope. Trust your car's engine braking with your gears. Use, just, use your brakes lightly, ensuring that the steering control is maintained. And really, the transmission is your best, best friend to slow the vehicle down. Your transmission will slow you down before you even need to use the brakes. If it's too steep, feather the brakes. Again, don't smash it and don't panic. Just use the transmission, your gearing brakes mainly. That's called compression braking. And if you do lose traction going up a steep slope, Apply the brake before you release the accelerator. That way you still have control over the vehicle. So moving on to the axle twisters. You see you have a front axle and a rear axle. And when your car's uh, rear or front axle loses grip, the tire, or lifts off the ground, the tire will lose its grip. So there is a technique in how to get yourself out of a ditch or potential problem as you're riding. The key is this. Instead of just shoving the car through, you want to have smooth power application, keeping your revs constant as you go through. However, in more difficult scenarios, you have to use a technique called the push and pull technique. This is where your front axle will lift, and so therefore you need to ease the momentum. And as soon as the, the front tire hits the ground again, then that's when you accelerate. So it's all about timing and feeling the road out. But if you do get stuck in a ditch, what you want to do is approach that ditch at an angle so that only one tire goes in the ditch at a time. And what you do is when you get into that ditch and you get stuck, you need to use a gentle rocking motion. And then use your steering left and right to get some extra grip to get yourself out. Again, the key is smooth, constant acceleration and no jerky movements. And as your car gains traction, you can then continue moving forward. So let's move on to traction control and differential locks. Now the traction on your vehicle is super critical to four wheel driving. The more traction you have, the further you can go without losing momentum. So let's look at the key differences between traction control and differential lock. Diff lockers and traction control are traction aids that help send torque to the wheels with the most traction. They're a massive benefit when off-roading on steep and uneven terrain. So which one could be better? Let's break it down. Traction control applies the brakes to the wheels that have the least traction. This transfers torque to the wheel with more traction. And traction control utilizes things such as wheel speed sensors on each wheel, brake actuators for each set of brakes, and something to provide the energy to activate the brakes. And that could provide hydraulic pressure and electronic controllers in the form of a computer processor. And that interprets the sensors and controls the actuators to get power to the right area. With traction control, you need to continue to apply the accelerator when your tire slides. This is contrary to the usual four-wheel driving techniques. You see, when a wheel spins, the sensors act on the braking system, slowing it, giving power to the wheels with more grip. With traction control, you must use your brakes going downhill because it lacks a central differential. But if the vehicle slides, then you need to engage your brakes after. Use hill descent if you have it. One of the key things is you need to pump the brakes first before releasing the accelerator. Because you see, otherwise, traction control will disengage. That's an important element with traction control. A diff locker mechanically locks together the left and right drive shafts of an axle. The left and right wheels always rotate at the same speed 
when a diff locker is engaged. This forces whichever wheel that has more traction to take more load and prevents the wheel with less traction from spinning freely. Diff lockers can be selectable, i.e. turned on or off by the user, or can be automatic. It depends on your vehicle. Rear diff locks are the most common in vehicles today. This prevents wheel spin across a rear axle. But if you lock it while your wheels are spinning, you could be in danger of damaging the axle. We need to wait until the vehicle has stopped, then you engage your diff locks. You see, diff locks allow the vehicle to cross terrain even for those with less skill. With a front and back diff lock system, however, the steering ability is majorly impaired, so be aware of when you engage that. A point to note here is that you don't lock your diff locks when going down a very steep hill. That's because it tends to induce an oversteer as you drive. However, rear differential lock enables you to go up a hill with only having one wheel having traction. Now let's look at side slopes. This can be a very challenging terrain to drive on. Momentum is key. This gives direction of your control as you're going down a slope. You need to ensure that you drive smoothly and have power on all of the time. And effective steering is the most important element of driving down side slopes. If you find yourself stuck, what you need to do is straighten the wheels according to the slope's angle to gain your traction and then turn it back and move forward. And you'll find that you'll continue to go up that side slope hill. Okay, so now let's move on to driving in all types of different terrain. Let's start with mud. So with mud, the key point is to do this, is to drive with a smooth and constant application of your power. You need to keep your accelerator movement to a minimum. That means you need to be smooth so that that decreases the chances of wheel spin. Sounds logical, but it's critical. Don't panic and floor your vehicle. Smooth, constant power application is key. You see, because too much momentum can mean loss of control. That's where wheel spin comes. And too little can mean getting stuck in the mud. So you've got to find that fine middle ground. And that's part of the adventure. You trusting your vehicle and learning where that middle ground is to keep that smooth movement of power. When the vehicle slows down because of traction loss, you need to decelerate your power and begin to steer. And in thick mud, rocking the car forward and back also works well, especially when you start to get bogged down or stuck. Correct the slide of your vehicle by turning into it and accelerating. Then you centralize your steering after that point. Okay, so let's move on to sand tracks, dunes, and beaches. Now, as we discussed before, it's critical to have the right tire pressure for these moments. So you need to drop your tire pressure accordingly, for example, over snow, which we don't have here in the Philippines, but we do have a lot of sand. Drop your tire pressure. Steering feedback is weak when driving on any kind of sandy surface. There's a lack of directional feel, so you need to be aware of this. You want to hold the steering wheel very loosely. Don't grip it with fear and follow the sand track. As it takes you down, let your vehicle take you with you. Steering is more effective when the accelerator is eased off as well. If you find yourself in a deep sand track and want to get out of it, hold the steering wheel in the center and then jerk the steering wheel around and then center it again and you'll be off the track. Use your brakes very gently because the sand makes the brakes extremely effective. So be careful. With sand dunes, it's all about timing your accelerator. Don't apply power on the bend, otherwise the car will get bogged down or stuck. Descending deep dunes should be done in low range second gear. The first gear is too slow and the sand will make you slide if it's in too low of a gear. 
Lock your rear differential for easier driving on dunes generally. Gently rock back and forth over a hard area to make a smooth frame for areas with small opportunity to build up momentum. Rocking in dry sand can dig the vehicle in deeper, so beware. But rocking in wet sand can help you get out of a ditch. So you've got to understand your terrain. Aim to drive on beaches under the high point of the tide. The smooth, damp sand. Use high gear ratios in low range. And don't drive on an unknown beach, particularly in the, in the nighttime. Okay. Let's move on to auto transmissions. So you need to keep the wheels perpendicular to the obstacle for traction. You need to be using your left foot for braking and control the amount of power to the wheels by applying the brakes. So it's a fine tune between your left foot on the brake and your right foot on the accelerator. If you get stuck going up a hill, you need to engage your drive and ease the brake afterwards. Driving down steep slopes is one of the few places that a manual gearbox is truly superior. You engage the lowest gear and use a combination of gears and brakes. So you're feathering it as you go down. You're using your engine transmission to slow you down while gently touching the brake for control. Engine braking is not part the primary tool for slowing down your vehicle. However, it does regulate your wheels braking. Try to keep a descent speed as constant as possible. This is the key to driving under control and driving slow. So with regards air conditioning, only engage your air conditioning unit if it's the type that does not have a compensator and increases the engine's revs. Because otherwise, it absorbs the power from the vehicle in those tough conditions and you need every bit of power that you can get. And furthermore, you need to stick with the driving line that you have chosen. Don't jump and make sure you commit as you go forward. On sand dunes and sand turns, delay giving power until the vehicle has turned. All right, so let's move on to wading. That's wading through water. How deep can you go? First thing to do is to check your manual. Get a tape measure and look at the maximum wading depth that your manual says you're allowed to go. Measure for that given depth, and that's how far you can go. And if you go any deeper, you're at risk of damaging your electronics, so beware. If your vehicle does get water in it, this is what you need to do. Step one, take out the spark plugs and the glow plugs. Jack up the back wheel and disengage the central differential. Rotate the wheel by hand. By doing that in fourth gear, the engine has no stream and the water will come out. Another way to check the depth is by foot. The first thing you do when being confronted by deep water is you use a long stick to go with you into the water. Take into consideration the firmness of the roadbed, and the speed of the current, and the waves there. Just beware. Ensure that as you drive, you slowly ease into the water. The entry speed must always be kept low. Don't come at it like you're gonna rush. Momentum can only be gained after a wave has been pushed in front of a vehicle. Now let's move on to riverbeds. It's obviously much easier to drive when it's dry. Most riverbeds are driven in low range first or second gear due to the many hard and unyielding rocks that you'll find. Low speed and maintaining perfect control is required. Slow and under control is the key. High water currents can leave large stones on which to drive. Slower currents can leave banks of silt, often soft and waterlogged, so beware. The car drives better on stones rather than simply muddy paths. In flowing water, you need to go at the pace of the slowest crawl. Otherwise, the vehicle will likely get damaged. On a flat riverbed, closer to the rocks is where the dirt is the driest, so pick that line. On a rocky riverbed, building bridges is often necessary. Now let's talk about trailers. 
After checking the boat onto the trailer, reverse the trailer into the water until the boat is ready to float. Then you unclip the boat and pull away from the trailer. Your driving technique is relatively the same here, but the trailer limits the car's overall driving ability. So the longer the drawbar, the more the vehicle will tend to cut corners. Steep descents can be dangerous for the trailer as it might come into contact with the car. So you need to listen carefully and watch where the wheels are when the power is applied as you drive. A lower gear ratio is often advised for most obstacles. Rear axle diff locks are helpful when pulling trailers over ground where anything over the slowest crawl threatens to damage the trailer. Okay, let's move on to salt pans. It is known to be rewarding, but dangerous due to the thick black mud underneath the top surface. Never cross the middle of a pan. Stay along the edges of a pan next to the grass, where the surface has had time to dry out. The surface becomes a waterproof layer, so there is a small crust on top, but underneath it's really muddy. So you need to stay near the edge, that's where it's drier, and you can get an anchor from another vehicle that's close by, but ensuring that they don't go through that same soft mud as well. Use the same line. In general, you need to use the second gear in high range, so you have the power if you start to sink to push yourself through. You should never turn hard on a salt plane. The vehicle will truly roll. If you get stuck, use logs. I hope that you found this little mini tutorial useful, but more importantly, that it's given you the itch to get out onto the road and engage that four wheel drive system, whatever it is that you have. What's most important is that you go out on an adventure. And don't forget to bring your friends and your family along with you. And stay safe and God bless you all. And we look forward to connecting with you on your next adventure or maybe you come and visit us here one day in the Philippines on one of our off-road adventures. Until next time, God bless you and have a safe journey.